We're about midway through some nice changes on the 61 Princeton. You can see here I've got the uh, old cap and resistor out of the bias board. That's a 50 volt cap. That's a little bit on the low side, even in a, in a Princeton. And uh, the solder joints were just massive piles of junk. And you see these two old wires. This is the wire going to the board uh, for ground. And this is the wire that's connected underneath to the diode. They were just sticking up in the air. So I have bent them over. So there's a mechanical J hook connection uh, and I have cleaned all this. I got the old flux off and the board's a lot cleaner. That makes a nice difference. And I'll, I'll have a good foundation to rebuild on. I removed all the pots and the, all the jacks, front and back panels, and I cleaned every surface inside the amp and out to get rid of that zinc oxide. And I cleaned all the pots and the hardware and I put everything back and you can see here I've reinstalled this cap here on the tremolo intensity pot. Uh, I've installed it correctly. It doesn't have that big ugly solder joint to chassis that it used to have. Can you see that? It's not just a, a pile that's barely sticking on solder to solder. It's actually soldered to the chassis now and we don't have all the extra length of that cap and it's not going to short out against this lug like it could have before. Just a much more stable build that way. Now, uh, I haven't spoken to the owner yet. We may put a Jupiter here to replace, to match the other Jupiters in the amp instead of this Mallory, but electronically, this Mallory is just fine. Um, it'd just be a cosmetic thing, um, but it's in place. I removed the old solder here and here on this cap because it was just all kinds of sludge mixed in with it. it had so much old flux, uh, just wasn't a good connection. So I got it all removed and cleaned up and re-soldered and it's a good mechanical connection and it's a good solder joint and uh, while you can still see some of the handwriting on the board it is greatly less legible now than it was it's really hard to undo that once someone writes on a board dang it all the chassis connections from the board have been redone you can see in the previous video how they were just barely hanging on these are nice and solid this is the way it should have been from the factory in 61 this must have been a Friday app, but you know, overall it's held up pretty well. Here I've removed almost everything from the board. You can see the wires are still attached and some of the original, the remaining original resistors are attached, but the board just has so much stuff on it. There's a spill there and there's excess flux and there's all kinds of dirt and stuff and contaminants. And uh, as you saw in the previous video, it had a whole bunch of metal oxides that did not belong there. And the Jupiter caps were installed terribly. So I'm going to get in here and really clean all this, get all the flex off and get the last bits of old solder off. And I'm going to repopulate the board uh, using carbon comps, uh, except for these two here, which will be a different type of uh, a power resistor. And I'll use those Jupiters, but I'm going to neaten them up. This is a really nice app. This is the kind of amp that you're proud to own. And I want to make it reflect that when you look at it. Here's a little fun thing in these old fenders. This wire here, which is one of the heater wires, is physically inside where it should go. But it was never soldered from the factory. It's just been resting there for 60 years, however many years. If I tug on it, it lifts right out. So I'm going to actually get that solder out of that joint and clean and tend these wires and, and clean and tend the connections there and redo all that. So it'll be rock solid. This is held up by chance, but uh, I think we can do better than chance. Well, everything cleaned up very well inside. And as you saw from the previous shot, I had all the solder out and really cleaned the board. And I put everything back together much more properly, much more neatly. The caps are all nicely oriented as much as I can. You know, I can't add length where they removed them before, but uh, it looks much better. Aside from one resistor on that cathode, which will get replaced as soon as the next order arrives, they're all carbon comps except for the two one watts. These are actually two watts down here, better than the old one watt carbon composites. So this thing looks a lot more period correct. It has no DC voltage leaking anywhere. Uh, we are going to get a uh, matching Jupiter just for this cap here in the tremolo. Um, I'm very pleased with how everything's coming together so far. The bias looks nice and pretty now. Um, that's the same 24K resistor that it came in with, um, though I neatened it up. I'm not sure if that's going to stay with the amp uh, with 110 volt mains, which is what the owner says he uses. The uh, tube's biased in a safe range. 
uh, with the uh, amp at 117 volt mains, which is what gives the 6.3 nominally the ideal heater voltage, uh, the bias goes up quite a bit. Uh, as the, the uh, bias goes up, the, the old GE 656s become more or become less matched. Uh, they're pretty closely matched within about 3% when uh, the bias is low and the voltages are low. But right now they're off by about 8%, which is okay. It, we're not getting any hum in the output from that, but we, uh, we, we're going to get a few artifacts in the, in the, in the tremolo. It's not too bad right now. Um, but you know, I'll talk to the owner about whether he wants to keep the, the two old GEs, just to have two old GEs or whether we need to get some different 6v6s for this, at which point I might revisit the bias. So that's why I left the old 24K fixed resistor in there, though I did need, neaten it up. As far as the sound goes, it's actually quite nice now overall, though the old speaker uh, is in dire need of a reconing. It's got some bad cone, uh, not cone cries, sorry, voice coil rubbing. You'll hear that. Let me just do a low E string. <laughs> So as you can hear, uh, that speaker needs some help. It's going to get reconed, uh, and it'll come back to 1962 at that point, which is a nice place for it to be. Other than that, the amp sounds quite nice. I played it into my real cab, but we're going to just kind of play through the stock one right now. Got a nice chime in the upper mids, but once it gets below about 400 hertz, it starts to get nasty and really attenuated. Uh, this thing has so much more lower mids and low end than good speakers. So that uh, voice coil is not only causing distortion, it's just not, it's not doing what it's supposed to do on low frequency information. Even with a 10 inch speaker, it should have a lot more lows than that. And it soon will. Let's take a listen to the tremolo. See, when you turn the tremolo up, the intensity up over a certain level, you do get that thumping and those artifacts that's just part of this circuit. So from noon and below, it's much less of a problem, but the effect is still there on the signal. Like most uh, tremolos like this in fenders, the uh, cathodyne uh, phase inverter tr trims, uh, the slower the speed, the less artifacts it has and the less thumping it has. It's when it, really when you go higher. There's some diode tricks you can do to make that a little less um, obvious, but at some point, how many newfangled diode gadgets do you want to stick in a 1962 fender circuit? So I'm going to be trying to restore this as much as possible without doing any, um, you know, Redesign. Speaking of historic accuracy versus redesign, you can see that the uh, heaters on one side are just going to the chassis ground, like they did on most of the student models of the day. In this case, I'm not getting any hum. There's no uh, 120 hertz or 60 hertz stuff in the preamp, so I think it's just fine. No need to improve it just for a theoretical benefit. While the cabinet itself seems to be original and in very good shape, the baffle's got a strange story to tell. You can see that there's a, a square 
darkening visible behind the grill cloth and that the square itself is not in fact square. Um, it's higher on the left than it is on the right. And the, the cleats seem to have been replaced at some point because this originally would have had cleats with rear mounted screws to hold the baffle in place. And those uh, cleats would have been glued and typically stapled to the cabinet. Uh, this has some cleats which seem to be a nice hardwood cleat, but they've never had screws coming from the back. There's no opening for the screws on the back. And they have been brad nailed and probably glued as well to the sides of the cabinet. So um, I don't think that the uh, cleats are original. I think what happened is that someone either damaged the original baffle or they cut it up to put a 12 inch speaker in there. And then someone put it back and made a new baffle with new cleats. And the uh, baffle, they cut a, uh, they, they did a little frame to keep the grill cloth from touching the speaker, to keep the grill cloth separated from the speaker. But they cut the frame unevenly. So um, I contacted one vendor who's, you know, I get cabinets from, but they don't have a direct replacement for this and they don't, uh, aren't doing custom work at this time. So I may farm this out to someone else to get a baffle made because I don't have a wood shop. Um, I would need to do some research on that uh, and see if these cleats need to be removed, uh, if they need to be positioned slightly differently to accommodate a baffle of the original thickness. Getting the original style grill cloth is not a problem. And uh, this is not the kind of thing that looks too shiny and new, even when it is. It would be nice if that off-kilter square was not visible, and it would be nice if the four screws weren't visible, but uh, that's really going to be the owner's decision. I am going to take the old speaker to be reconed because, as you heard, it's just beyond the pale, um, but it is not beyond saving. Anyway, uh, to all my OCD brothers out there, I see you, and you cannot unsee that, so check back to see what happens with the Zamp next time, and... Uh, Thanks for watching.